Sophie Xion, better known as Sophie, was a Scottish musician, record producer, singer, songwriter, and DJ. She died at the age of 34. Let's dive into some trivia and facts about her life and career. 1. Her full name was Sophie Xion II. She was born on September 17, 1986. 3. She died on January 30, 2021. 4. She was better known mononymously as Sophie 5. Her stage name was stylized in all caps. 6. She was a Scottish musician, record producer, singer, songwriter, and DJ 7. Known for a brash and hyperkinetic take on pop music 8. Sophie worked closely with artists from the PC music label, including A.G., Cook and Kfoti. 9. Sophie produced for acts such as Charlie XCX, Vince Staples, Kim Petras, Madonna, Nicki Minaj, and Naomi Amuro. 10. Sophie, who initially remained anonymous, came to prominence with singles such as Bip, 2013, and Lemonade, 2014. 11. The songs were collected on the 2015 compilation product. 12. Sophie's debut album Oil of Every Pearl's Uninsides followed in 2018. 13. The album earned a nomination for the Grammy Award for Best Dance, Electronic Album. 14. Sophie, later, came out as a trans woman. 15. After Sophie's accidental death in 2021, Pitchfork called Sophie the influential British producer who molded electronic music into bracingly original avant-garde pop. 16. Sophie Xion was born on the 17th of September 1986 in Glasgow. 17. She grew up there. 18. Starting at a very young age, Sophie's father would play cassettes of electronic music in the car and take Sophie to raves, and Sophie quickly became enamored with the music. 19. After receiving a keyboard as a birthday gift, Sophie then began to create new music. 20. At the age of approximately 9 or 10 years old, Sophie expressed a desire to drop out of school to be an electronic music producer. 21. Although Sophie's parents did not allow this, and Sophie continued in school. 22. Sophie continued to create music throughout adolescence. 23. Sophie started to DJ weddings and birthdays as a child. 24. A half-sister asked Sophie to DJ her wedding. 25. Around this time, Sophie learned to DJ in addition to production. 26. Sophie's adult music career began in a band named Motherland with bandmates Sabine Gottfried, Matthew Lutzkinoy, and Marcelad Fsi. 27. She later collaborated with bandmate Matthew Lutzkinoy on a series of performance works. 28. In 2011, Sophie scored the short film Dear Mr. Mrs. by Dutch team Frudenthal, Verhagen. 29. Sophie became involved with artists affiliated with the PC music label after encountering Dux Kids, a project between A. G. Cook and Danielle Hall. 30. Sophie primarily used the Electron Mono machine and Ableton Live to create music. 31. Instead of sampling, instrumentals are built from waveforms. 32. Likening the construction of a track to building a sculpture out of different materials, Sophie used the mono machine to create sounds resembling latex, balloons, bubbles, metal, plastic, and elastic. 33. All music wrote that Sophie's sophisticated, hyperkinetic productions feature a surrealist, blatantly artificial quality, typically making use of high-pitched female vocals in addition to sugary synthesizer textures, and beats drawing from underground dance music styles as well as experimental sound design. 34. The New York Times described Sophie's work as giddy fun, but, a broken bar, also an invitation to consider pop's pleasures structures and gender expectations, 
and pop's commercial status as both a consumer item and an emotional catalyst. The fader likened it to K-pop, J-pop, Eurodance at its most chaotic, and even turn of the millennium American, UK boy bandisms. 35. Sophie told Billboard that the genre of music produced was advertising. 36. Sophie's early visuals came from a series of colorful images described as homemade molecular cooking. 37. With the singles cover at often depicting objects made from plastic or other industrial materials. 38. This was an idea that originated from discussions with John Roberts, a fellow electronic musician. 39. Sophie was described as a reclusive figure, and remained anonymous for some time, concealing Sophie's identity in interviews by masking Sophie's voice or covering parts of Sophie's body. 40. Early in Sophie's career, Sophie's real-life identity was the subject of press speculation. 41. Prior to coming out as a trans woman, some commentators accused Sophie of feminine appropriation, on the assumption that Sophie was a man using a female stage name. 42. In a 2013 Pitchfork email interview, when asked about the choice of Sophie as a stage name, Sophie responded, it tastes good and it's like moisturizer. 43. At one Boiler Room show, drag performer Ben Woozy was recruited to mime a DJ set while Sophie pretended to be a bodyguard. 44. The music video for It's OK To Cry, released in October 2017, was the first time Sophie's voice and image were used in a release. 45. Sophie appeared nude from the bus stop against a backdrop of clouds. 46. This was widely interpreted as a coming out announcement as a trans woman. 47. Sophie confirmed a trans identity in subsequent interviews, also speaking of feeling boxed in by labels and describing music as Sophie's chosen method of communication and self-expression. 48. Representatives informed Pitchfork that Sophie preferred not to use gendered or non-binary pronouns. 49. Sophie died at around 4 a.m. local time on 30 January 2021, aged 34, at home in Athens, Greece. 50. Sophie's death was reportedly caused by slipping and falling after climbing up to watch the full moon. 51. Artists including Christine and the Queens, Kashmir Cat, Phineas O'Connell, Rena Sawayama, FK8 Wicks, Sean Wasabi, Alice in Wonderland, Sam Smith, Ali X, Dylan Francis and Arca offered tributes.